Okay. Well, for some reason, my uh, like front-facing camera isn't working on my computer, so um, for panel prep today, I'm just going to use um, this big um, OBS because it seems to be working. And uh, you can still see the questions, which isn't ideal, but yeah, oh well. Um, so I'm going to try and get through uh, SQL, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, today, doing every tenth question like I did last time. Uh, so uh, what is an ERD? Uh, an ERD is Entity Relational Diagram, and it is a way to pre-map out your tables to make sure that they match normalization uh, requirements. Uh, an ERD is an Entity Relationship Diagram, which is a diagram that maps out your database tables and multiplicities in the relationship. Creating a ERD design phase helps you visualize what you need to code, where to set. Okay, so yeah, it's a map for your database. Um, so, what are objects in SQL? Um, I'm not sure on this one. Um, I'm going to lean towards, hmm, I don't know. Uh, objects in SQL are any defined object that can store or reference data. So tables. Um, some objects may encompass other SQL objects. The database itself is an SQL object. Okay, so even database. Um, the database contains schema objects that contain table objects and views. Columns are the smallest data object. Okay, so everything. <laughs> Literally everything in SQL, if it contains multiple pieces of data, is an object. So the database, the tables, schemas, columns, pretty much everything but individual pieces of data in SQL is apparently an object. Okay. <laughs> so everything but data. Um, what is a primary key? A uh, primary key is the main, what you put on the main column of a uh, given table, and all the data uh, going after that has to be related to that primary key. When you look up a table, you usually look at it by the primary key. It is a uh, unique and not null, so everything in the column that has primary key has to be unique and not null. Um, so yeah, it's just the ref primary reference point for a table would probably be the best way to do it. Um, a primary key is a field in a table which is uniquely identifies each row record in a database table. Mm -hmm. uh, primary keys cannot be null. Yeah, uh, A table can only have one primary key. Okay, so make sure you're to add one primary key, but okay, I got, I got what they're looking for. Um, mm. uh, what is durability? Uh, durability is uh, one of the acid properties of uh, database um, transactions, and it is the uh, concept that any information stored to the database should be maintainable. It should be storable, so like if the power goes out, it should still be there. Um, so it's durable and holds up even uh, if mistakes are made. Uh, durability ensures that one transaction has been committed, it will remain committed. So yeah, it will remain there. Uh, even in the event of power loss, crashes, or errors, once a sequence or statements are executed, the result needs to be permanently stored in a non-volatile memory to defend against these faults. So, yeah, it needs to be storable, more or less. Um, uh, what is transitive dependency? Uh, transitive dependency is the concept that if you have like a foreign key referencing a primary key, and that primary key is no longer there, then that uh, foreign key should no longer exist. It should have like a delete cascade there. Uh, oh wait, no. Transitive dependency is actually pertaining to normal forms. Okay, actually I think transitive dependency is you, you have to have it such that you can't have any column that is only related to an object related to the primary key. So a transitive dependency would be like, if you have like a, a person and then address, well, the address is itself like its own table under normalization. It isn't necessarily related to the person. So transitive dependency is anything that's not directly related to the primary key, but only indirectly through another element. 
Um, a transitive dependency is an indirect relationship between values in the same table where one value is determined by another value. Okay, so I was primarily doing it through primary key, but uh, what was I thinking of then earlier? Um, okay, it might come up later, but okay. So transitive dependency is for normal forms. Um, that it, It's the third normal form one. I was getting it confused with something else. Uh, what do you need to get a JDBC connection? Uh, to get a JDBC connection, you have to set up the proper configuration, make sure you have um, all of your, um, so like the database you're going to be accessing, the proper credentials to access it. You're also going to have to set up some sort of uh, DAO layer type of thing where you give the specific type of calls that you are going to be using JDBC for. Um, I mean, you could throw in the fact that you need like a database established already. I think that should go without saying. But uh, yeah, primarily configuring it. Um, first, you must have a configured driver. OK, that goes in the configuration class. Driver manager loads the specified driver and gets the connection to the database. Data source is an interface that uh, preferred to driver manager because it allows some transparency on part of the data source. So configuration. Uh, that seems to be the main thing they're going for. Um, I, I guess as part of the configure class, you also have to say what type of driver you're using. And like, we've only worked with thin drivers, so I thought that was kind of obvious, but like saying the type of driver would be useful. Um, but yeah, more or less configuration. Uh, date versus timestamp. Um, I do not know. I do not know the difference between date and timestamp. Uh, timestamp converts from current time to UT UTC and back. Date time does not do any conversion. So why not just use date time? Then? The conversion seems unnecessary. Uh, timestamp differs by time. Okay, that's why. Timestamp is more useful for time zones. Uh, date time is consistent. Okay, so timestamps, if you want, like, time zone differences. That, that's actually useful. Uh, timestamp can be indexed while date time cannot. So timestamp. Uh, queries with date time cannot be cached. Queries with date timestamp can be cached. Okay. So timestamp. <laughs> Just use timestamp. Uh, timestamp is uh, cacheable. It goes specifically to the time zone that you're in and uh, it can be indexed. So Use timestamp. <laughs> just, just use timestamp is what I'm learning. Um, so timestamp does conversions. Um, timestamp timestamp does conversions to your area. It can be indexed and can be cached. Date doesn't do any of those. Okay. Um, let's see. When can it execute? Um. So they have a question mark here. Um, so I'm guessing what is read committed isolation level and when can it be executed? But I don't get that. So I'm going to go to create versus insert um, is a filler question. So create creates the tables, insert updates, like inserts a row into the table. Uh, create is a DDL command that is used to make a table. Uh, procedures and functions. Okay, also procedures and functions. That's probably important. Uh, insert is a DML command that is used to add a row to a table. So, yeah, exactly what I said. Um, what is a composite primary key? Uh, so, how do I phrase this? Um, so, a composite primary key is a primary key that is made up of different rows. Like you combine multiple different rows and so long as like the combination is unique, you can use like the combination of rows as a primary key. Or columns would be the better phrase. Uh, composite key or composite primary key refers to cases where more than one column is used to specify the primary key of a table. In such cases, all foreign keys will need to include all the columns in the composite key. Note that the columns that make up the composite key can be different data types. So it has to, multiple columns make up a single primary key. 
I think I was saying about the right. Clustered versus unclustered index. No idea. No idea. Uh, clustered index sort and store data rows in the table or view based on their key values. Non-clustered index has a structure separate from data rows, which contains the clustered, the non-clustered index key values, and each key value has a pointer data row. Um, okay. Um, store data in the table or view based on their key values based on rows, which contain non-clustered index key values, and each key value has a pointer to the row. So row-based? I, I don't know. I don't get that. Um, let's see. OK. So that is it for SQL. And 11 minutes, so comparable time will take about to 20 minutes. So yeah, I'll continue with this. Uh, what is the first tag in every HTML file? I think they're looking for doc type, but in reality, since HTML5, you don't actually need any <laughs> tags in HTML. Um, I'm guessing doc type is what they're looking for, though. Um, apparently, doc type or HTML, but yeah, doc type. Um, what is UTF8? A uh, uniform transfer function eight. Unicode transformed format. Unicode transformation format. Uh, eight means it uses eight blocks to represent a character. Okay, so UTF is Unicode, and that's what sets the standard characters. Okay, UTF Unicode transformation format. Unicode transfer format, and it is what sets up the various elements. Um, okay. Um, what is OPB? I've literally never heard of that. Um, represents objects object-based programming, basically a superset of OOP. Uh, so it's a fancier version of OOP, apparently. Um, object-based programming. I'll look into that a bit more. Uh, OBP. Um, let's see. Two sixty, two seventy. What are the types of functions? I'm guessing this is in JavaScript. Uh, you have function expression, where you save a function as a variable. You have function declaration, where you don't do that. It's functionally the same elsewise. Uh, arrow functions, which are a type of function expression, just different notation with different this elements. Um, you, well, closures wouldn't be a type of function, it's a function of a function. And callbacks, again, wouldn't count for what I think they're asking. Um, I guess ifies would be important, so immediately invoked functions are immediately invoked. Um, I think that's what they're looking for. Or apparently just declaration and expression. Okay. Uh, so going to 281. What is bubbling? Uh, bubbling is the uh, process of moving a child element to a parent element. So it moves up the propagation tree. Um, I believe that's it. Um, event bubbling is a form of event propagation. Got that. Uh, event bubbling propagates events from child to parent. Okay, good. And event gets fired is handled by the child element and then propagates up to the parent with its handler for the event. Okay, so it's a form of event propagation that goes from child to parent. Form of event propagation, child to parent. And what is capturing is the exact opposite, event propagation, parent to child. Um, yeah, so opposite bubbling. Uh, let's see, it's 191. What are the ready states in HTTP? Um, so, hmm. yeah, I'm going to be honest, I don't know this one. Uh, request not initialized is zero. One, server connection established. Two, request received. Three, processing request. Four, request finished and response is ready. So it hasn't been sent. The connection has been established. The request has been received. It's been processed, it's processing, and it's done. 
So not started, uh, started, started, sent, processing, and uh, processed. So not initialized. Um, server connection is established. So connection established. So initialized, not established. Um, request received, processed, and request finished. Um, so request not initialized, server connection established, request received, processing request, request finished. Okay. And, um, well, I guess that went faster than I thought. Um, okay, 15 minutes is about appropriate. So, yeah, I'll leave it there.